there guys. I'm just introducing another weekly vlog here because I think I actually deleted my original intro clip. So here you go. I started this vlog on July 8th and I'm excited to show you what I recorded. Kevin found pork belly. Well done, Kevin. Thank you. Look at all the pretty tomatoes. Oh my gosh, these are gonna make an amazing salad later. Tonight I just had mayak eggs and uh, some leftover jajangmyeon and I air fried some apples, but later this week we'll have to make salad. Cooking the pork belly, it smells so good. I'm just finishing up the last of my jajangmyeon. Wow, that's pretty, isn't it? <laughs> so good though. I'm gonna finish it with this pork belly.
Evan just made us some grillage. We're trying ostrich and we made a shrimp skewer and zucchini. And I am doing another page of cyber <laughs> this one's of cyberpunk and son, of course, because who can forget son's cyberpunk dance? I sure I sure can't. <laughs> Hello! Okay, what is today? Today is Monday, July 10th. So, um, yeah, I wanted to just update you a little bit. So, I am now on page 129 of Bleak House. And that means I have about 90 pages to read before Saturday. So, hopefully I can buckle down and get some of that done today um unfortunately i've been having like a lot of anxiety just so much anxiety that it's hard to focus on reading um but and i unfortunately my foot i had an accident in pt and we were hoping that i would be able to keep going but it looks like it's gonna be mad so that's part partly where my anxiety is stemming from um so on that that's unfortunate because it means I won't be able to work. We probably won't be able to go on vacation when we were hoping and some other stuff. It's just gonna take probably a couple months to get better. So, um, but that the good thing is if I can just turn my brain off of social media after the prayer meeting tomorrow is probably when I, I'm gonna delete social media for a little bit. Oh, I can't really do that though because what if people tag me in bingos? Hmm. Maybe I'll just have to keep a real strict time when I go on social media, like afternoon and not morning or something like that. Maybe I can just delete it from the mornings like I do during Lent. I think I'll do that. So I think I'm going to delete social media in the morning so that I can focus on reading. Um, and I've so, but as a result of not being able to really focus on reading last night, um, and I'm hoping I can... I'm hoping that this isn't what's stressing me out, but I am kind of stressed because I'm behind. I'm supposed to be reading at least a chapter a day and I, I haven't been able to do that lately, the last couple days. So I'm behind a little bit on that. So I think that's partly what's stressing me out, but it's also because of my foot and also just, I think being on social media too much. So I need to get better at that. And, um, but I, because of that, you saw that I was journaling. Um, I'll show you my journal. Hang on, let me show you my AT's journaling that I've been that I was doing last night because I don't know how well you were able to see it. The lighting was kind of weird and stuff. So, okay, here's here's the journal. So I'm gonna do more with these front pages, but this is the album song list, and here's the album cover, the world episode one, I think it's called the world episode one movement by ATs. Um, the titles, I just get kind of lost in the words and the titles they are kind of long, but here's all of ATs all together in their gorilla outfits. Um, I just love this look for yo song with the blue hair, like really stunning, right? I mean, they all look stunning. They all just, they always look stunning. And, and this comeback, this comeback in particular is really powerful because the lyrics are all about waking up, um, you know, and finding out the truth about your world. And I just love that. Wake up world, wake up. Look at the lyrics for propaganda. Wake up, wake up world, are you there? It's time. And it's like a dystopian theme, so lies, control, rules, numb, hatred, emptiness. So um, a lot of K-pop groups have opening, especially 80s though, I feel like 80s especially does this. They'll do like an opening that's storytelling specifically, and then they move into storytelling in other ways, but it's the opening track is like about storytelling. So this is Hong Jun, the leader. So I wrote his name. And then this is Jong-ho, who is the main singer. He's got just an incredible voice. And I, I can never decide which one of these is my bias. They're just both my favorite people. They're so different. AT, Hong Jung is always like super stylish and he's the rapper, the leader. He's the main rapper. He writes lyrics frequently and works on concepts and stuff. And he speaks English really well. So he's able to connect with English audiences, but Jong Ho's voice is just able to connect no matter what. <laughs> um, and he always has like really intense expressions. Like he always looks kind of pissed. <laughs> um, but 
what is the truth? I want to know. Like, that's one of the, the best lyrics in this song. Like, every song on this album, there's a couple lines where Jomo is just, like, singing his heart out. And he really brings, he, he carries the albums in a lot of ways because he is the best singer in the group. But other group singers, even if they don't have quite the pipes that Jomo does, they have a lot of character and, and emotion that they can put into their voice. And San is one of those where he doesn't get tons of lines, um, but whenever he sings, it's so emotional. You can really feel his emotions in the songs. And he's also known for his dancing. Um, he is the one, who, I think, who mainly brings people in. He's kind of like V of BTS. He, he's the person that people watch him dance and they're like, who, what is this group? <laughs> Um, in Cyberpunk, he has this really famous dance in it, um, in, in the very beginning of it. And so anyways, that's, that's all where I, where I am so far with this. I was envisioning writing the Korean lyrics in here, but that hasn't really happened. I've been <laughs> writing the English lyrics, but hopefully I can get to some Kore Korean lyrics soon. I wanted to say I'm 50% through Once Upon a K-Prom, and I'm just enjoying the plot so much. And I just heard from Victoria that she finished it and rated it three to four stars. And she said it was predictable but fun, which is kind of what we're going for, I think. <laughs> um, I really like it, and she really liked it, so that makes me happy. Um, so, and I just wanted to mention that one of the, the supposedly fake characters in here, um, one of the supposedly fake idols, is friends with AT's Wooyoung. Woo, sorry, I cannot do this with one hand. <laughs> Come on, focus. No, it's not focusing. AT's Wooyoung, right there. Um, and Stray Kids Changbin. And I just love that because that that it's well known that in K-pop, a lot of members are friends if they are the same age. So if they're born in the same year. So I wanted to show you this article that I looked up um, this is Tyon, by the way. Tyon of Twice. She's my favorite. She's one of my old biases. <laughs> she's just so cute, and she's a Christian, and I just love her. Okay, so, um, so, A.T.'s, it mentions in the book, A.T. Zuyoung and Stray Kids Chang, Changbin are friends with this fictional character, but I wonder, so clearly this character is part of the 99 liners, but it makes me wonder if, Cravity's Serum or Seventeen's Dino um, could be the actual character. Like, maybe he's not a fake character. Maybe he's one of those guys. So now I need to find out who Cravity's Serum and Seventeen's Dino really are and see if maybe they could potentially be that K-pop character in Once Upon a K-pop. So that's kind of fun. I just love that. Um, and I feel like this doesn't necessarily show what a k-pop idol's life is so far um i just feel like k-pop idols have to work so much but there's so much downtime in this where they're not working it just makes me think well let's let's there of course there has to be though there has to be downtime where they're just able to talk basically i feel like comeback really portrayed the amount of work that goes into becoming a k-pop idol and being and keeping your image up Whereas this one, there's a lot of downtime. And in Comeback, there was not a lot of downtime. So, yeah, but that's okay. I'm still really enjoying it. And, you know, that's kind of common with romance books. Where it's not going to be, like, completely realistic, but it's fun anyways. So I wanted to talk as well about... Let's see. <laughs> You're just getting a tour. I haven't continued with this because I'm waiting on my buddy reader. Um, and this I haven't continued with because I'm trying to read Bleak House. And, although I am, how far am I in this? Uh, nothing to envy, I am 30% through, so I've been listening to it, but I just really want to read it, because it's so good. I've been listening to All Things Bright and Beautiful in the evenings. I am 14% through Bleak House, 12% through Cloud Google Land, that's slow going. This one, this is Beyond the Story, the BTS memoir. I got it yesterday, and I started it, and it, it's so good. I'm obsessed. I just don't want to do anything but listen to that. So maybe I'll do that while I'm getting some work done today. Um, because that I can focus on for sure. And it's... Oh, the only hard part is sometimes keeping track of who they're talking about. Which member they're talking about. But it's been talking about the up... Like, um, how BTS was formed. The, the worries they had with their company. Because they had a female group, Glam, that didn't take off. 
and it takes so much money and investment to to create a K-pop group that a small a group that's as small as Hybe was when it started creating BTS. Um, <laughs> it just can't really afford to have a failed K-pop group because that's so much money down the drain. So BTS started with like no budget, and there's it's just it's unbelievable that they took off the way they did. It was just everybody expected them to fail. So really, it's an incredible <laughs> it's an incredibly inspiring story. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, what else? I have way too many things out, as you can tell. But once in a while, I just go on a spree of gathering things, and then I want to check this out. Um, the Blackpink It Girl magazine. Um, I'm supposed to be starting Princess Bari, like, probably today. Um, but I don't know if I will get to that. I just don't... So this book, Traffic, is... I'm really interested in this. This is the story of how... Well, let me... I don't know. It's not going to show me the description. But it's, like, the story of how media became all about the clicks and the attention you can see all of these little white things are arrows um they're all arrows so the whole point um in in the news media is what can grab everybody's attention what can garner the traffic and that's what's happening um and that's how it started and that's how it's continued so I'm really interested in, in hearing kind of the story of how certain, cert, how the growth of that industry happened and into that direction. So, and then I have the Travels with Charlie because I need to get started on that pretty quick. And that's it right now. But I did also want to tell you, I started, I started working on Lesson 6 Future Tense, the new Future Tense. So this is the Future Tense that I already know. Urkoyu versus Urkeo. So, urkeo is used, so urkoyo is all like a really basic future tense. I'm going to do this, period. And then um, the new one, urkeo, is a, it's like a response. It's as a reaction to or as a result of what the other person says or thinks. So basically, it's more flexible. If you say urkeo instead of urkoyo um, after a verb, so... So the verb harkoyo, which is to do. I will do versus I will do if you say so. I will do since the circumstances are like this. I will do if you do not mind. Um, yeah, it's more like flexible depending on how the other person responds. You know, since this is the case, I'll study. Um, or if it's okay with you, I'll study. Versus I'm going to study. So anyways, that's... That's what I'm working on, and I'm just loving it. It's so interesting. So hopefully I can finish up this lesson today. We'll see, but I also have lots of other things to do. I need to prepare for the prayer meeting detail. I need to prepare the prayer meeting details. It's mostly prepared. Um, I need to call some, I need to call like three doctors. I need to email my boss, and yeah, some stuff. So that's kind of, oh, I need to work on a Dostoevsky essay too um, for the, uh, Carla at Race to Walk invited me to write a Dostoevsky essay on a Christmas story by Dostoevsky that I did a video on and I'm so excited they're doing a Dostoevsky issue. I'm gonna read the whole thing. I'm so excited about it. So yeah, that's kind of what's happening. I had forgotten. I, I don't know if I ever really noticed that move before in No More Dream. But in the BTS memoir, it talks about how intense the choreography was and how hard and long they had to work to get it to get it all together and in sync. And yeah, I can see why. That that is such intense choreography. Okay, can you guys see the turkeys? There's one turkey. Two turkeys. Baby turkey. Four turkeys. I think. Or is there five? I don't know. The baby isn't as baby as I... I didn't catch him at a super baby age. <laughs> oh no, JK! There are two other little babies. You see their heads? Ah, one's got his mouth open. Is there another one? I think there is. There are four babies! Baby turkeys are big. <laughs> oh my gosh, the turkeys visited my yard. <laughs> they are really enjoying our neighborhood today. 
there's a baby. Turkey babies aren't that cute. I'm just gonna be real with you, but they're still babies. Hi, it's Christy, of course. You know that, this is my channel. <laughs> well, today is Wednesday, July 12th, and I thought I would just let you know what's happening over here. <laughs> So at the moment it is 10:13 a.m. and I just published the prayer meeting for North Korea. I meant to vlog some of that last night, but I keep forgetting when I'm really excited or nervous about something. I just cannot remember to vlog it apparently. But regardless, it went really, really well. Thank you so much to Joanna and to um, Dia for coming and being such support for me and just praying with us and thank you to Nolan for coming as well and um, I hope you guys will check this out on my channel and pray along with us and I literally as I was listening to it back just to make sure everything was okay I was praying along with it it's like it's like a podcast that you can pray along with and I just I love it so this is like one of my favorite things that I've done so I hope you guys will check this out and um yeah, so, and it was really fun to put together. There was a lot of research involved, and I was just so impressed with Joanna's research, so. Right now, I am researching an essay on Dostoevsky's Christmas story. Um, so, uh, Carla from Raised to Walk, um, the YouTube channel Raised to Walk, she was my first friend here on YouTube, and she runs a journal called The Unexpected Journal. Ah, I'm so excited for the itsy come back, kill my doubt. I just saw Nmix came out with two music videos actually, and they're both amazing, they're so good. Anyways, regardless, um, Raised to Walk, let me show you her channel. So she runs, an e she's like an editor for a journal um, called The Unexpected Journal, which is a play on the name The Unexpected Journey. And she does like live streams on her channel for all of the new, uh, the new volumes of it. And I've been in, I think, two of the volumes previously. They published a short story of mine and they published as well an essay of mine that was about my parents and their story in the cult. Um, woo! <laughs> so yeah, she, her channel is really, really amazing. So definitely check that out. She has so many cool resources on there. Um, regardless, I'm writing an, a, an essay on the Dostoevsky short story, A Christmas Tree and a Wedding, which I love that short story, and I'm, I'm really excited to be researching it for this essay, so that's what I'm doing today. I need to really get a move on today because it's already a few days late, but I've just been so busy that I haven't been able to put it together until today, so I've got lots of research going about that, and I've got, I'm reading a couple different translations of it, so this is... Um, a translate, I forget, who's this translated by? I can't remember. Um, so I have this translation and I have the biography. This, this is such a great biography too by Joseph Frank. And I started The Belt in the State because that's Kate Howe's book club pick. Um, but I haven't gotten very far because I'm in the middle of so many things that I actually need to finish. So, but I really, I really am interested in it. So we'll see what happens. I started Travels with Charlie. I should show you my books here. So, oh yeah, so I need, I really wanted to start Against Heresies last month, but that didn't happen for Ancients of Thon, sadly. Um, I never got to this either for Janelle Thon, The Innocence of Father Brown, but regardless. Um, oh yeah, and so Once Upon a Key Prom, I'm almost 60% through it, as you can see, and it's really cute and um, probably yes, very predictable, but it is cute. And I think it's so funny because the the narrator is doing a great job pronouncing like everything like in a very Korean way, like all the names and things like that, except for the last name Che. <laughs> she it's it's spelled Choi, you know, if you look at it and you pronounce it according to English, if it's romanized, that's how we, that's how you would say it in English is Choi. But it's actually Che, and I'm just surprised that she doesn't know that because she knows everything else. It's crazy, but regardless. Like, she knows how to pronounce Mangne, which is the name for, like, the babyest member of the group. The youngest member is called the Mangne. Um, if you don't know, in Korea, age is, like, 
a really big thing. Um, everything goes by age in Korea. Um, unless you are, like, you have, super, su unless you are superior at your job or something. It all goes by age. There's a hierarchy. Regardless, I'm really, I'm actually really enjoying this. I don't, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't DNF this. Even if I was just listening to it on my own, I don't think I would DNF it because it's just like total escapism. So yeah, I'm glad we chose that. And I'm 40% through Beyond the Story. I've been listening to that every chance I get, which is why I haven't finished this yet. <laughs> this is what happens. I get involved in too many things. I was listening to All Things Bright and Beautiful by James Harriet at night when I've been trying to sleep. But honestly, there's too much music in it and it keeps waking me up when I'm listening to it and I'm falling asleep. It'll wake me up because there's music or suddenly it'll get really loud and somebody's like singing. It's usually music. It's just, I really, I'm enjoying it because I just love James Harriet, but I can't really listen to it when I want to because, yeah. I'm 15% through Bleak House. I need to be finishing this. I need to get through another like 5% in the next two days. I don't know how that's going to happen since I'm trying to write this essay. I just have not had time for reading in the mornings. I just have too many events and too many things happening. So hopefully I can finish that. I might just have to listen to it and maybe go back and reread it. I've been, <laughs> this as well has been suffering. Cloud Cuckoo Land has been suffering because I've been trying to focus on this and yeah, so that's unfortunate. But I did start Travels with Charlie last night because that's going to be our book club pick for the short classics for charity book club um next month and i i love it already i'm only 10 percent in and i love it. i'm actually 20 percent into the ebook but i didn't read the introduction so <laughs> but regardless it's so funny i love john steinbeck's writing i'm so excited to read more from him i definitely need to read more john steinbeck i haven't read him since high school and I definitely didn't appreciate him then. <laughs> so here's the Dostoevsky story. Here's a book in Korean. I don't even know. Oh, this is the one about my grandfather, the child soldier in the North Korean military. Um, I haven't started this. I, I, I just read the very beginning of this. Haven't read those. This is something another, a subscriber recommended. Um... Yeah, I really, I would love to read that if I get a chance. Uh, yeah, I want to, I want to listen to this too. I, that's actually, I really do want to listen to that, but I, it's just not happening this month because 12 Years a Slave. I didn't realize that was actually a book. I didn't realize there was like a memoir called 12 Years a Slave. I just had heard of the movie, but then I also, and I, <laughs> I haven't started Princess Bar either. Um, Tiffany, um... I, she's planning to finish it this week, and I don't know about Dia, but Dia reads very quickly, so probably very quickly as well. <sighs> so I just don't think I'm going to get to it this week, because I haven't even started it. And that's a book that I heard about through work, um, about shortages, sh food shortages, and what might be coming in America, and kind of how to get ahead of the shortages, how to prepare for them. Um, this is another book I learned about through work, Thinking 101. It's... Uh, is it Harvard? I, there was this. Wu Kyungan is a teacher at one of America's, you know, most prestigious schools, and this is an audiobook that is basically what she teaches in her class about thinking problems, problems that students frequently have in thinking. So she's basically teaching you how to think, which I just think is fascinating. I haven't listened to it yet though. And I think I talked about this already. Traffic by Ben Smith. I haven't, as you can see, 1%. I'm just too busy with other things. And The King's Speech. I also didn't realize there was a book about this. I didn't realize that the movie was based on a book. I definitely want to read that too. So that's kind of what's going on there. And let's see. What else have I been doing? Ah, uh, I just can't stop looking at this book. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> But regardless, um, yeah, band book. I read a bunch, band book club. I read a bunch of this a couple nights ago. So I thought I would just kind of talk through some of the stuff. I'm really loving it. Like, except for this one book club scene where everybody's recommending stupid books. <laughs> like, books by revolutionaries and stuff. And it's like, mm, yeah, disagree. I don't think he's amazing. Oh, sorry, hang on. Ugh. Okay, this is not really working with one hand. 
Okay, but this is great. I'm loving this book though, honestly. Okay, so it talks about Shakespeare, um, how people have put on Shakespeare plays throughout history as a political statement, and how Shakespeare wrote about men who had been dead for like a hundred years because it was safer but it was still it's still been used like there's it talks about here in turkey three years ago in turkey a group was putting on a midnight a midsummer night's dream and then was arrested for it they were all all eight actors were put in prison because the the um the rulers recognized that it, they were making a political statement so fascinating, fascinating. Um, and yeah, so it, it really interesting. I, it, there's like a literature class that they're taking us into a literature class in Korea. And I forget what year this is in. It's like 1983 or something. It's a really big year in Korean history though. Um, modern Korean history. It was the year that the democracy really became a thing in, in South Korea. Um, what else? Were you under the impression that Shakespeare was apolitical? <laughs> I love that. The professor is so great. He's such a character. But yeah, we, it, it just strikes home to me that so many things that we want to be apolitical aren't. Like, everything is kind of political, unfortunately. That's something that I found, too. It's really hard to escape politics when you're... When you're reading when you're a reading person it's pretty much impossible to escape them ent entirely um okay yeah so oh and he talks about how pe like film the government uh filmmakers are complaining to the government that they have no free speech instead just lower the regulations for on-screen nudity that'll keep people happy so basically the bread and circuses way of keeping people happy um in an oppressive government, basically. So he's talking about how in an oppressive government, the government will try to keep the people happy by entertaining them. So instead of giving them free speech in this, under this government, they will just lower the regulations for on-screen nudity to keep them entertained. <laughs> Stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just, I'm really enjoying this. It's fun to be in the brain of somebody this smart. <laughs> What else is going on here? Oh yeah, so, and they mentioned Kim Ji Ha, which is somebody I learned about um, in the Korean history. I actually do want to read Kim Ji Ha, but these other books that they recommended, like a book by Che Guevara, and stuff, like, it's like, mm, no thanks. Um, but I'm interested in reading by Kim Ji Ha. Like, so in the same breath as the feminine mystique, pedagogy of the oppressed, Counter-Revolutionary Violence, Bloodbaths, In Fact, and Propaganda by Noam Chomsky. The Motorcycle Diaries by Che Guevara. Also, they mention Cry of the People and Other Poems by Kim Ji-ha, who was um, like a social writer. He was concerned with social consciousness. So, yeah, I'm just loving this. It's absolutely the best. Oh, and there was something else cool that I wanted to mention here as well. So, um, another thing they were talking about was... Um, an ancient story that they did at the school, they performed at the school. You know, this student right here, she's the main student of the book. We're following her and she doesn't want to be involved in politics at all. She's just at the school to study. And so she shows up to this performance and she's helping perform it as part of this club. And she did not realize it was political um, because it was like a 500 year old story. Okay, it's only a little bit later, but um, I've been working on my article and I just wanted to say I'm finally delving into all of the Joseph Frank, like the, so the one that I was reading, the biography, is a condensed volume of like one, two, three, four, five volumes. So these are all by Joseph Frank as well. Um, they are, the original volumes, there's five of them. And then, oh, and he also has the lectures on here. That's exciting. So this is Hoopla. My library has all of the, all of the writings by Joseph Frank on Hoopla, which is so exciting. So I'm about to jump into that for my essay. And then I also wanted to mention, um, 
Let's see, Jenny recommended this, by the way. This is apparently related to K-pop. I don't know how exactly, but I'm excited to check it out. Apparently, this another book by Cho Namju, who wrote um, Kim Ji Young. I forget what year it is, but it's a really a famous one that's going around right now. This is another book that is only, I think, available in English in the UK, potentially. I don't know. I know that it's not available here yet, but regardless, I, I just saw that it was made available through this free library of Korea, but I also saw some other things on there that I am really interested in reading. There was Land by um, Park Kyung-ni. I guess I'm feeling talkative today. So Bleak House, let's talk about it. So I was really stuck on chapter 10, The Law Writer for a couple of days. And up until this point, I was mainly enjoying the writing and the characterization, but the plot wasn't, that interesting and neither really were the characters to be honest so that was up to page 140 and i was really struggling with this chapter except there's moments like this for the smoke which is the london ivy <laughs> i just love smoke which is the london ivy like there were moments like that throughout it that were like i really like the writing and i think i can wait around for the plot so this chapter i was really struggling and i was just like kept going. I was just like, I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to keep reading. I don't get it. But eventually it'll become clear. And it did. And it started becoming really interesting because I can sense the mystery happening here. So we're following Mr. Tolkienhorn, who is a, he's in the employ of, uh, oh dear, what are their names? I'll, I'll get to them in a minute. But there's, there's a rich couple that we see in the very beginning. And we don't know really that much about them. But we know that they're involved in some suits in the courts. Um, and then we're following Esther, who seems to be unconnected, but I have a feeling that she's not unconnected. But Esther's kind of boring, let's be real. Esther and her, her friends, they're all young people. They're just, they're not very exciting. So we get back to Mr. Tolkienhorn, who, Tolkienhorn, who is in the employ of these rich people. And he's like trying to track down this, this copywriter and um the the lady uh the rich lady that he serves was like "Ooh, what interesting handwriting i want you to track down this guy <laughs> so he's been trying to track him down and um <laughs> so he goes to a shop um that he gets the copy work done at this shop so he's like okay the copywriter's probably at this shop and the there was another one of those moments that just made me laugh aloud mr snagsby is one of the people who runs the shop that does the copy work and so when Tolkienhorn is looking out the window he signals to his wife you know Tolkienhorn, rich influential <laughs> i just i just oh it's so funny i just uh, the humor here is just just amazing. So then we find the copy copywriter and the copywriter's dead. Mr. Tolkienhorn finds him dead. And now I'm just like, I am hooked, man. I am just like, oh my gosh, there's a mystery here. What is happening? I mean, I knew there probably would be a plot eventually, but finally we're getting to the plot. And then another moment, Mrs. Snagsby keeps calling Nemo Nimrod. <laughs> Oh my gosh, just just perfect, just so perfect. Um, and yeah, lots of humor about the beetle, which by the way, I didn't know what a beetle was, so I have to read it. I found an article, it's like on a Victorian literature kind of website, so I need to check that out, it's on my phone. But I haven't done it yet. Um, anyways, so now we're getting, you know, Mr. Tolkienhorn is finally reporting back to, oh, the light, Lester's, the Lester's. Sir and Lady Lester. Those are the rich people that he's serving. So he's finally getting back to them. And, um, yeah, he tells them, oh yeah, the copyist is dead. And so this is where I ended off for now. I have 20 more pages to finish today. Um, but, no. Yeah, 20 more pages. No, I was wrong. It was 25, not 15 pages that I had left. Anyways, um, I want to finish to up to 200, so I have 20 more pages left. But, Regardless, I need to get to work. So it's now, what time is it now? It's 9.47 now. So I, I should have probably already started working, but I just was like, I want to read more because um, there's a mystery. So the mystery that, um, so there's the mystery is being encapsulated now 
in the relationship between, wait, deadlock? Wait, deadlock. Is it deadlock and, wait, deadlock and Lester Lester. So it's not Lady Lester, it's Lady, Lady Deadlock. Now I'm confused. Is it Lady Deadlock? <laughs> or, anyways, whatever. So he is, so Lady Deadlock and Mr. Tolkienhorn are like, um, they appear to take little note of one another, as any two people enclosed within the same walls could. But whether each evermore watches and suspects the other, evermore mistrustful of some great reservation, whether each is evermore prepared at all points for the other, and never to be taken unawares, what each would give to know how much the other knows, all that is hidden for the time in their own hearts. Ah! I can't wait to find more, but we're going back to Esther. So I definitely see what Tiffany's talking about. It's annoying when you're really into a couple chapters and then it switches to another perspective. I don't, I don't want to go back to Esther. She's kind of boring. Like, anyways, regardless, Lady Deadlock, that's that's Sir Lester's wife, right? I'm confused now. I need to look that up. I there are so many names, so many names, so many names. We're at our favorite outdoor spot today, with a fountain. It's called Los Tres Chiles. They have the best chips here, as you can tell. <laughs> They're super thin and crispy, and I think they must fry them here because they always are like shiny with oil and hot when they come out. And they're all like slightly different colors, you know? So good. We've never tried their queso before, but I had to try it today. Isn't that so pretty? And I got some tacos so I could get some takeout, so I don't have to cook this weekend. And they gave me cheese because Kevin asked for cheese on his. Yeah. Hello, I'm just gonna finish off this vlog. It is now Friday, July 14th. And we just got home from Santa Rosa, and so I'm making progress slowly but surely on Once Upon a K Prom and the BTS book. And I just wanted to check in with everything else. I'm making good progress on my goals, so I'm at over 20%. So I have like a 21 pages, I think, left of Bleak House before tomorrow's live show. And. I made, I'm 20% through Travels with Charlie, so by the end of the weekend I'd love to get to 50, but we'll see. I made some progress on Cloud Cuckoo Land, so I'm doing pretty good on my goals. And I wanted to mention too that I just discovered a K-pop book club on YouTube. Um, put on by, by the way, there's lots of K-Trop fun vlogs coming out and it's amazing. So Lily Lost the Plot, live shows by NMIX one of their girls, she's like an Australian Korean, I believe. And she speaks half in English and half in Korean on these book clubs. So I'm really excited that I discovered this book club. And so I had to mention that. And something else really exciting that I had to tell you guys. Um, so you guys remember me talking a lot about Families Together. So the original name of Families Together was the Neighbors Program. And it's going back to that name, and it's also going to be with a different company called Project 127, which acts as a bridge between the church community and kids in foster care that need families. So, and the, the whole goal of this organization is to reduce the number of kids that are waiting on families and to support Christians who want to foster, basically. It just provides like trainings, government, government approved trainings and stuff like that. So, um, state required, stuff like that. So. Um, that is the family together program is now going to be under this umbrella rather than the Tennyson Center. So we will be sending all of our ads money now to Project 127 and they look just wonderful. They look like a perfect home. So um, t the Tennyson Center is just kind of consolidating its efforts in a different direction and so um, Hope decided to move families together this different organization so I had to tell you guys and they sent me a sticker isn't it cute I love it so much regardless excited about that and I had to tell you as well <laughs> I got this beautiful 
version of the memoirs of Lady Hagyong, which is exciting because I haven't been able to read it much at night because I only had it on my iPad, but now I have it here so I can read it without worrying about the blue light, but I can still have, uh, yeah, and it didn't read to me anyways, I don't think, because, uh, yeah, it w it's a PDF, so I'm pretty sure it couldn't read to me anyways, but it, I can still have it read to me if that works. I just can't remember because it's been like weeks since I've actually read it, but excited to do that. So anyways, I'm gonna head out to Tiffany's reading sprint. She's gonna do some reading sprints at 4.30. So yeah, I'm gonna um, probably be working on some, my, the rest of my essay at reading sprints. I'm probably gonna be doing that. So I just wanted to update you guys so I could get this video out and I will talk to you soon. Next week, I have a really, really fun plan. I can't wait to let you know what, what, what I'm going to be doing for next week's vlog. I'll start it on Monday, though, so I won't be starting it tomorrow. Bye! Let me know how your re week of reading went.